And we're back in the Stone Creek Kitchen this morning with Executive Chef Jared Lupin from Down Under Wines and Bistro over in Gilbert. And their food is an Aussie Asian fusion. And to show us what that plays out like, we're going to make some crocodile spring rolls. We just had some oyster flambe. Flambe, yep. I tried that. And I, and I love the, this aioli. Yes. And it, it really just kind of, I think it popped the flavor it does of the oysters. Up. So yeah. if you love oysters, you're going to love them even more, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's a, it's a layered flavor. That's mm -hmm. the idea, is a play off your tongue. So. I wouldn't say that it masks the flavor of the right. oyster. So if you're not an oyster person, you probably wouldn't like it. Right. But, but I think it definitely did enhance it. So okay. um, let's make some crocodile swing rolls. All right, sounds good. Uh, we do have our crocodile. We use a uh, U.S. vendor uh, from the south, so we get, uh, you can get crocodile, alligator, uh, little mussels, uh, great catfish, actually, that we might play with down the road. But for now, uh, we do get our crocodile from them. So it is a little uh, tough. It does have some tendons in it. Uh, in a way, kind of a weird chicken of the swamp, I would say. It's very versatile, but um, most people in the South usually flash fry it, just give it a little crispiness, and then uh, keep it juicy. You can make stew. They do it a stew. lot like uh, like chicken nuggets, which, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you can also do it as a gumbo. Um, I do mine more of a sausage, uh, just I don't use a, a filler for it and poach it. Um, a little green onion, a little uh, cilantro. So all of these ingredients mm -hmm. get combined with this, yep. and then let's show our viewers what it then kind we, of... Let uh, me grind it up into a paste, or uh, well, I guess it's a force meat, so it's more of a sausage uh, consistency. And then this is going to go inside here. Yep, just a little bit of water to use a wrapper. I'm not really a big egg guy um, as far as wrapping goes, uh, doing gyoza, mandu, uh, pot stickers, things like that. I, I don't I like using water. I'm not really a big egg guy. So uh, just get a little corner fold, and then I like to seal it. This is the Philly seal. So you just wipe down the corners here, roll it up like a little envelope or an envelope seal, if you will, and then you just wrap it all the way up. I feel like I'm kind of getting a theme here that, and I don't know if it mirrors a little bit of what your life was about, I, I'm a, <laughs> but I feel like it's a bit of an adventure w when, you, when you're creating some of the, the, the recipes and the dishes. Is. Would I be kind of like overanalyzing too much? Uh, no, actually, uh, I grew up with uh, parents from L.A., um, and they kind of opened me up a little bit to some fun stuff, uh, fondue at an early age, um, a lot of weird uh, fun stuff, Thai food, spicy food. Um, a little bit of obviously the Southwest um, and those styles mimic from LA. So good tacos, horrible sake, but you know it all works. So <laughs> you get a good background. I th from all and that. also, I think I th I'm kind of sensing that the rules are there are no rules that you right. try it, and if it right. works, awesome. You that's got another one, and oh. if it doesn't, then well, you know, yeah, at least you played with something new. You played with your food. Right, and and that's all you can do really is when you get into it and you start playing with food, you realize it's endless. Um, you can do so much now with molecular gastronomy, the way that the world's What's going. That? Oh, wow. Well, we are going to get into some molecular gastronomy in just a little okay, bit. Okay, give me actually, like so. the first grader. Let's take science and gastronomy, which is a study of food, food and culture, uh -huh. and you just marry them together. So you add a little science to that, change the molecular compounds of things, um, such as jellies. Uh, we are doing a uh, Zinfandel sorbet in house, so I reduced two bottles of Zinfandel and start I'm in for that. I will go down Everybody for that. Everybody is in for that. So <laughs> you I had will be me there. at Zinfandel. I had you at Zinfandel. So yes. Good stuff. Well, I want to show everybody over here. Mm -hmm. Um, what this what this looks like when you cut into it, and it, it essentially just kind of fries the outside. It was uh, we said it's not a flash fry, right. um, which the difference well, it's, between it's actually the, not a deep fry. I'm it's sorry, it's not a deep. Fry. It's a flash fry. Mm -hmm. I had it backwards. Right. Say All that for like me do, properly. Uh, flash fry. What you're doing is you're crisping the outside and leaving the internal temperature to kind of raise that and zone through either steam or just a, a superheat. So, uh, deep frying. I'm not a big fan of. I, I'm not a big fan of cooking chicken all the way in a deep fryer because, again, you're using hot grease. It pulls the uh, the uh, dryness out of it. Not my big thing. I like a lot of crispiness, but I don't like to overdo it. So I just like to crisp it up a little bit, make sure the inside's warmed up, and then from there, uh, you're good to go. So. Well, right I tried off. it already, but I want to. But I'll try it again, just so okay. that people don't think that I'm, you know, a fibber. There we go. But um, the best way I can describe it, and I have to ask, is this a popular sure. dish over there? It is. Uh, I sell out uh, probably twice a week. Okay, so the best way I can describe it is it just tastes like a regular spring roll in the consistency, you know, if you yep. like a, a really smooth sausage, yep. um, but it has a mild, mild, mild fish taste. I mean, it, very, very mild. And then this dipping sauce, I don't know what it is, but I could drink uh, it. It's actually a uh, Thai chili, so it's going to be Thai chili, garlic, honey. I use a little rice wine vinegar just to dilute it, um, and scallions and sesame oil. So That's really good. Like, I like to keep it crisp. Uh, use your cilantro on there. Um, today, I kind of just wanted to go playing with it, so not too much green. But it, I, if nobody told you that you're eating crocodile, you would never know. It's not like you're. You go, uh, that's a swampy flavor. It's not it, that at it all. It could be right. Exactly. <laughs> swampy is a term. It's a term. It's a term. Yeah, like I'm gooder. okay. 
Yeah. I, thou did not offend. Okay. Right? No, no. <laughs> okay. I try not to be so swampy. <laughs> exactly, me yeah. too. It's my motto for today. We'll stick around for our final segment with Jared, who's going to be preparing what I cannot wait for. It's an ah ahi tuna wellington. Let me yes. say that again. An ahi tuna, tuna wellington. wellington. Yes, with we an avocado, pistachio, pesto, and curry foma. Yeah, there was like six dangerous. ingredients that I loved in there, but we'll show you how that turns out coming up here in the next segment.